Today I want to discuss a Reddit post where a man took a brand new vitamin K2 supplement and then got some seriously nasty side effects. Let's go over the post together so we can analyze it, talk about where these symptoms might have come from, and I can also explain how you can avoid problems when supplementing vitamin K2. Okay, so the post is called Nasty Side Effects from K2 MK7 Persisting Days After. What do I do? He starts off by saying, I recently was diagnosed with a vitamin D deficiency and began taking 5,000 international units of vitamin D3 and 90 micrograms of vitamin K2 in the form of MK7. So this guy did what many people do. They go to their doctor, ask them for a vitamin D blood test, and then get their results back, which indicate a deficiency. The two things I'm noticing here just from this first sentence is that he's taking a fairly high dose of vitamin D3 with 5,000 international units. Keep in mind that the RDI is 600 international units. The RDI is controversial and a lot of people would like to see it higher, I know that, but 5,000 IU is definitely a high dose vitamin D supplement. The 90 micrograms of vitamin K2 that he took in the form of MK7 is fairly standard. I personally prefer MK4, but most guides will tell you that MK7 is better. They base their claims on a few studies that showed that MK7 is able to elevate blood levels of vitamin K2 more effectively than MK4. My counter argument is that we don't want the vitamin in the blood, we want it in the tissue. And it might just indicate that the tissue is less able to absorb MK7. But of course, it also always comes down to personal preference. MK7 supplements usually come in a dose from 50 micrograms to 200 micrograms. So his 90 were definitely in the normal range. And I wouldn't call it a high dose vitamin K2 supplement. The post then continues. My first dose that day gave me horrible heart palpitations, brain fog and lethargy. At some point that night, I even almost blanked out for what must have been a fraction of a second. Now, these are definitely some pretty serious side effects from taking a supplement once. Unfortunately, the brain fog and lethargy are very unspecific symptoms to go off of. So we can't really tie them to any nutrient directly. They can be caused by many different things. The heart palpitations are more useful because they indicate a muscle dysfunction and can directly be tied to certain minerals. I will talk about that in a second. He then writes, did vitamin K2 make me hypocalcemic, drawing calcium away from the rest of my system and into my bones? The palpitations are gone, but the brain fog, lethargy, and icky feeling continues to persist. So his theory is basically that the vitamin K2 pulled the calcium out of his blood and tissue and put it into the bones where most of our calcium is stored. Hypocalcemia is actually defined as just low calcium blood levels, but I'm pretty sure he also means low in the tissue. This is actually not a bad theory, and to explain why, I have to go over the nutrients that influence muscle function. Because again, we will be focusing on the heart palpitations, which are a muscle dysfunction. The heart, as well as every other muscle in our body, is governed by four important minerals that can carry an electrical charge. These are the four most important electrolytes in our system. They are magnesium, calcium, sodium, and potassium. Magnesium and potassium sit mostly inside the cell, and sodium and calcium sit mostly outside the cell. You will always also find these four on the other side, but that's just their general tendency. I explain the mechanism behind this in more detail in my video on heart palpitations, but basically what you need to understand is that all four need to be balanced against each other for the muscle to function correctly. And in this case, this also means for your heart to pump and beat at a regular pace. The supplements he took must have thrown off one or more of these electrolytes and messed up the balance. Of the vitamin D and the vitamin K that he took, usually vitamin D is the culprit. That's because vitamin D lowers both magnesium and potassium, which can lead to a calcium overload. Calcium is responsible for muscular contraction. So in this case, this could mean that the heart is over contracting and also not able to relax afterwards because that's what magnesium is for. But you don't have any if you're taking high doses of vitamin D because vitamin D uses up magnesium. So this was actually my first theory because it is very common. And I even have a video on what happens in severe cases of vitamin D toxicity. 
But he later writes, I'm on 2,500 international units of vitamin D now with no exacerbated issues. So clearly it was the vitamin K2. I will just have to take his word for it and go with that. This means we have to go back to the four muscle minerals and think about how vitamin K2 affects this balance. As you probably know, vitamin K2 supports calcium metabolism. It basically transports calcium to where it's supposed to be. Without it, you run the risk of tissue calcification, where you have too much calcium buildup in the soft tissue where it's not supposed to be, and usually also a calcium deficiency in the bones and teeth where it's supposed to be. Many people have some form of tissue calcification and reversing it is somewhat difficult and requires more than vitamin K2 in most cases. I explain this in a different video. Now, what could have happened in this case is if you are very severely K2 deficient, that if you're taking a normal K2 supplement, you instantly boosted your K2 intake and instantly boosted your calcium transport. This is basically his theory, that the sudden spike in K2 took away the calcium, which then in turn would mean magnesium or potassium would become dominant, which could also upset the balance. The problem is that usually vitamin K2 doesn't take away calcium, it doesn't lead to low calcium, it just supports its transport. So it should actually mean that the calcium is more bioavailable where the body needs it. So I think there's something else going on, which we will talk about in a second. First, he ends the post by asking, what can I do to help recover fully? I've lost so much drive and attention span since taking it three days ago. I'm on 2,500 international units of vitamin D now with no exacerbated issues. So clearly it was the vitamin K2. It just sucks as I was honestly feeling not so bad prior to taking it and so much worse afterwards. And he also gives an update a couple of days later. So it's been about four days since dosing vitamin K and I'm feeling 95% recovered. I'm continuing 2K international units of vitamin D with no symptoms and supplementing additional calcium, magnesium and zinc. Okay, so what do I think is going on here and what is my recommendation? First things first, please don't continue supplementing blindly in such a case. I know he feels better leaving out the vitamin K2 and only continuing with the vitamin D and the other nutrients that he talked about, but he definitely still has an imbalance of the four muscle electrolytes that we talked about before. Otherwise, such a small dose of vitamin K2 would not cause these severe side effects. My guess is that out of the four, so magnesium, calcium, potassium, and sodium, more than one is extremely low. Only then would such small changes in your supplement regimen have these drastic effects. Now, this is nothing to freak out about. It's very common to have low electrolyte levels, but it's definitely something you need to focus and work on. I was in the same position, and if you let it go too far, you will burn out at some point, because these electrolytes govern many things in your body. Not just your heart and muscles, but your complete energy system, so your overall well-being. My recommendation is to get your nutrient levels checked properly and then find an experienced practitioner who can help you set up a diet and supplement regimen that is based on these results. This is also something I explain in a different video because the process is a lot more than just getting your blood tested. And as always, you want to take your time and start slow. Refilling your minerals and especially refilling these critical electrolytes takes time. Unfortunately, it's not done in a few days or weeks. This can take months. If you are in a similar situation as this guy, I hope I was able to help you a little bit and explain the underlying nutrient interactions. I hope you liked this video and I see you in the next one.